Hi, my name is Catherine Smith and I'm a forensic psychologist from St George Healthcare Group. I work for a medium secure, low secure and open deaf service and treat mental health patients with forensic histories. My work has really focused on adapting treatment um, for the needs of my deaf patients and today I've been asked to briefly explain the work I do at All Saints um, and the treatment approach I use and maybe provide some insight about why deaf patients stay in hospital longer. Um, I'm going to try and present a little bit of a PowerPoint to you. Um, I am sorry in the delivery that it comes to you though. Um, okay, so first of all, I think the main discussion is going to be really about um, whether rehabilitation is the most appropriate treatment approach. I'm going to argue that it isn't and provide you with information about a more appropriate treatment approach, the habilitation approach. So, what does rehabilitation mean? Well, it means that we restore someone back to health or normal life through therapy or training. And restore means to return someone back to their former condition. So if we look at a rehabilitation approach, it's quite a linear model where someone goes into hospital and receives an assessment of treatment needs and risk, moves on to some education about their problem, additional um, treatment needs unrelated to their offending behaviours or maybe related such as substance abuse or anger management before moving up into offence specific work, maybe sexual offender treatment programmes or domestic violence programmes before receiving um, relapse prevention strategies. Um, if you are a hearing patient and you go into hospital, a clinician working with you will have the tools available. The assessment tools will be ready available on a shelf and specific treatment manuals will be available on the shelf for the clinician to choose which is the most appropriate treatment method for those patients. Um, unfortunately, in the deaf service or in the deaf population, Clinicians working within those services don't have the luxury of picking any items off the shelf because there are very few assessments validated and, um, within the deaf population. There are very few interventions that have been created and disseminated um, across the world for the deaf um, mental health forensic population. So when a deaf patient comes in, a clinician first of all has to think about the most appropriate assessments, adapt the assessments, think about the most appropriate treatments, adapt treatments or actually indeed create their own treatment models. Hence that takes much longer and that actually impacts on a deaf person's stay in hospital. Therefore, one of the reasons deaf people might stay in hospital longer is related to the fact that we have no ready available assessment and treatments. Therefore, the clinicians are creating them. So, why might I be questioning whether rehabilitation is appropriate or not? Well, first of all, rehabilitation focus, focuses on restoring some an individual back to their prior risk-free self, inferring that they have reached all the developmental milestones. However, our client group have not reached their developmental milestones due to a number of factors, particularly due to deprivation, unique to deafness, or, um, and therefore we cannot restore them back to a prior risk-free self. Therefore, we cannot rehabilitate but we can habilitate. Now, habilitation looks at really targeting the gaps in knowledge and experience that have been caused by deprivation. And we target these by trying to create internal change. That's changing someone's thoughts or feelings to therefore change their behavior or externally manage the person um, where internal change isn't possible. In order to identify the impact of deprivation, we have to assess the impact of deprivation from the assessment period, throughout the treatment period, and even into the community. Our aim is to develop skills through the provision of new experiences and opportunities, and also target weaknesses by 
providing new skills, developing on those skills, or also identifying where skills can't be developed, identifying, identifying how we can compensate for those skills through external management. And in order to, to provide a habilitation model, we really need to get our staff and team to provide parental guidance, because our aim really is to consider that our patients really haven't Develop, um, reach developmental milestones, now we have to try and support them in reaching those milestones even though they are adults. So how might we do this? Well, it appears that people with um, symptoms of deprivation due to deafness um, present quite similar to individuals on the autistic spectrum condition. Um, Neither of the individuals can learn implicitly um, and they haven't learned implicitly throughout their development and they don't learn implicitly when they get to adulthood. And therefore, both um, individuals require explicit concrete teaching methods to understand themselves, others and the world. However, unlike ASC, the deficits that we see in people with deprivation are not due to a hard wiring of the brain, but actually a deprivation in experience and knowledge. Therefore, the prognosis appears to be if we target deprivation by filling in the gaps through explicit teaching methods, and where internal change isn't possible, we ex use external management strategies Effectively, we should have a patient who is demonstrating their optimum level of functioning with the most effective risk management strategies identified and implemented. And of course, the outcome of the patient's optimum level of functioning will depend, be dependent on themselves and on their diagnosis, on their deficits. Um, and on their language skills. So, in order to provide the habilitation model, we have a pyramid that actually is unlike the rehabilitation linear model. It is three-dimensional and has an extra tier that targets